Hi guys, I'm going to be reading Act 4, Scene 2, Lines 51 to 186 of William Witcherly's The Country Wife. And the scene takes place in a bedchamber, and it's a discussion between Pinchwife and Marjorie about Mr. Horner, who Marjorie finds out is the one that's a secret admirer. And the part of the scene that I'm going to be starting with begins with an aside of Mr. Pinchwife. So, tis plain she loves him, yet she is not love enough to make her conceal it from me. But the sight of him will increase her aversion for me and love for him, and that love instruct her how to deceive me and satisfy him, all idiot as she is. Love, twas he gave women first their craft, their art of deluding. Out of nature's hands they came plain, open, silly, and fit for slaves, as she and heaven intended them. But damn love, well, I must strangle that little monster whilst I can deal with him. Go fetch pen, ink, and paper out of the next room. Yes, bud. Why should women have more invention in love than men? It can only be because they have more desires, more soliciting passions, more lust, and more of the devil. Come, minx, sit down and write. Aye, dear bud, but I can't do it very well. I wish you could not at all. But what should I write for? I'll have you write a letter to your lover. Oh, Lord, the fine gentleman, a letter. Yes, to the fine gentleman. Lord, you do but jeer. Sure you jest? I am not so merry. Come write as I bid you. What, do you think I am a fool? She's afraid I would not dictate a love to him. Therefore, she's unwilling. But you had best begin. Indeed and indeed. But I won't, so I won't. Why? Because he's in town. You may send for him if you will. Very well. You would have him brought to you. Is it come to this? I say take the pen and write, or you'll provoke me. Lord, what do you make a fool of me for? Don't I know that, that letters are never writ but from the country to London and from London into the country? Now he's in town, and I am in town, too. Therefore, I can't write to him, you know. So I am glad it is no worse. She is innocent enough yet. Yes, you may when your husband bids you write letters to people that are in town. Oh, may I so? Then I'm satisfied. Come begin. Sir, shan't I say dear sir? You know one always says something more than bare sir. Write as I bid you, or I will write whore with this penknife in your face. Nay, good bud. Sir. Though I suffered last night your nauseous, loathed kisses and embraces. Right. Nay, why should I say so? You know I told you he had a sweet breath. Right. Let me put out but loathe. Right, I say. Well then. Let's see what you have writ. Though I suffered last night your kisses and embraces. Thou impudent creature, where is nauseous and loathed? I can't abide to write such filthy words. Once more, write as I'd have you, and question it not, or I will spoil thy writing with this. I will stab out those eyes that cause my mischief. Oh, Lord, I will. So, so, let's see. Though I suffered last night your nauseous, loathed kisses and embraces, Go on. You will Yet I will not have you presume that you shall ever repeat them. So. I have writ. On then. I then concealed myself from your knowledge to avoid your insolencies. So. The same reason now I am out of your hands. So. Make me to you, my unfortunate though innocent frolic of being in man's clothes. So, that you may forevermore cease to pursue her who hates and detests you. So, what, do you sigh? Detests you as much as she loves her husband and her honor. I vow, husband, he never believe I should write such a letter. What, he'd expect a kinder from you? I should write. Come now, your name only. 
What, shan't I say your most faithful, humble servant till death? No, tormenting fiend. Her style, I find, would be very soft. Come, wrap it up now whilst I go fetch wax and a candle, and write on the backside for Mr. Horner. For Mr. Horner. So I am glad he has told me his name. Dear Mr. Horner, but why should I send thee such a letter that will vex thee and make thee angry with me? Well, I will not send it. Ay, but then my husband will kill me, for I see plainly he won't let me love Mr. Horner. But what care I for my husband? I won't so. I won't send poor Mr. Horner such a letter. But then my husband. But, oh, what if I writ at bottom? My husband makes me write it. Ay, but then my husband would see it. Can't one have no shift? Ah, a London woman would have had a hundred presently. Stay, what if I should write a letter and wrap it up like this and write upon it too? Ay, but then my husband would see it. I don't know what to do. But yet, Yvads, I'll try, so I will, for I will not send this letter to poor Mr. Horner. Come what will on it. Dear sweet Mr. Horner, so, my husband would have me send you a base, rude, unmannerly letter, but I won't, so, and would have me forbid you loving me, but I won't, so, and would have me say to you, but I hate you, mo poor Mr. Horner, but I won't tell a lie for him, there, for I'm sure if you and I were in the country at cards together, so, I could not help treading on your toe underneath the table, so, or rubbing knees with you and staring in your face until you saw me. Very well. And then looking down and blushing for an hour together. So, but I must make haste before my husband come, and now he has taught me to write letters. You shall have long ones from me, who am, dear, dear, poor dear Mr. Horner, your most humble friend and servant, to command till death, Marjorie Pinchwife. Stay. I must give him a hint at bottom. So. Now wrap it up just like the other, so, now write, for Mr. Horner. But, oh, now, what shall I do with it? For here comes my husband. Okay, this was a longer passage than I originally anticipated to do, but I had to include that little passage that Marjorie has by herself because it's very important, because it shows that this is definitely the denouement of the play. Marjorie is finding out who her admirer, who her admirer is, and that he's in town. So she would be able to see him and meet up with him, and she would be able to get fine china from him behind her husband's back. And this section, there's a lot of different emotions going on because the husband is very angry with what took place before this particular scene, which was he kept asking Marjorie what happened when she was disguised as her brother and she met with Mr. Horner. So that led to the climax, which was this, where Mr. Pinchwife was going to have Marjorie write a false letter to Mr. Horner to make him not want to do anything with her, not be around her, not see her. But it backfired on him because now she has become bold, witty, and she's less silly than she originally was. And she's taking it upon herself to betray her husband, even though in the end of this play, she is left by both her husband and Mr. Horner.